Hello, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you for the introduction. Much. So I'm here today to speak about indirect taxes and how you can use WooCommerce to comply with indirect tax laws. First of all, what are indirect taxes? Well, just a fancy name of describing the taxes, some of which are behind me here. I'm sure you know a few of them. In the US, you have sales tax. In Canada and Australia, you have GST. In Germany, Mehrwertsteuer. In the Netherlands, you have BTW. And almost all countries in the world have these. And they're called indirect taxes because as opposed to direct taxes that are directly collected by the government, you as a business owner get a great joyful job of collecting those on behalf of the uh, government. And that can be a bit of a hassle. So I will explain exactly how you can do that. I will cover how they are calculated, how you can configure WooCommerce to co correctly calculate your, your taxes, what the limitations are, because no, no tool is perfect and WooCommerce is no exception. And then finally, I'll talk a bit about conversion rates, because that's a question that frequently comes up as it is connected to tax calculation. So I work, as was said in the introduction, as the head of sales at the sales tax automation tool. And don't worry, I won't be pitching any of our products. But we do get a lot of inquiries from people who start selling online or have a modest business and need help with their taxes. And in most cases, they don't need a tax automation tool. They just need some basic consulting, which is logical because um, taxes are boring, <laughs> let's face it. And most business people don't start a business because they, they want to deal with taxes. Um, and moreover, there is a lot of FUD standing for fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the industry created by sales consultants or tax consultants who are incentivized to do that because it will attract more customers and they can bill more hours by making it look more complex. They can right, justify uh, sending larger invoices. So the result is that a lot of people don't really know how to, do, how to deal with taxes. And we see three archetypical ways of people who contact us, who deal with taxes in an yeah, unhelpful way. And the first strategy we often see is this one, the ostrich strategy, right? People who say, okay, this is complex. What I'll do is I'll just ignore this whole texting altogether, stick my head in the sand and hope it will just disappear. But unfortunately it doesn't. And often they are close to having an anxiety attack every time they get a regular communication from their local tax office. And it's taking a lot of their um, brain space and mental space, and that's completely not necessary. The next archetype is the polar opposite of this one, analysis paralysis. People who want to know everything there is to know about taxes before they even make a sale or launch their business. Uh, founders who launch their business in Europe and want to know exactly how their products will be taxed in different states of the US, how the th thresholds are in the different states, how to register once they hit such a threshold. And yeah, that's taking up a lot of their time, which would be better spent focusing on their products or uh, doing marketing or sales. And then finally, geofencing. People who are worried about what, how to comply in certain regions and then just geofence their solution, making it unavailable for purchase from, for people from certain locations. And um, that's a lot, a lot of lost market potential. Also, not necessary. I vividly remember the conversation I had with an influencer one day who was about to launch his uh, online product. He was based in Europe. And he had a lot of followers in India and he was really worried about what would happen. He was convinced I will launch this. It will blow up. I will have tons of sales in India and then I will have a problem. So he was close to a panic attack, had already researched extradition treaties between India and the country where he lived. And this is also completely unnecessary because you can comply with taxes in four simple steps. Not easy always to implement, but four simple steps. First of all, you have to know where you are obliged to register, right? In most locations, um, there's a threshold. 
meaning that if you sell for a certain amount only then you have to register for taxes. In other countries, such as Spain, it's from the get-go. So for example, in the UK, it's 85,000 pounds. If you'd be based in Spain, you would have to start or register before you start selling. And the way to find this out is by visiting your local tax office. People are often hesitant to, to do this because they're afraid their head will get bitten off or something. In general, they're kind people and they also have information on websites. Otherwise, you can consult with your local chamber of commerce and there you should also be, find, be able to find this information. Registration itself, if you have the obligation to do so, is, is usually quite easy. You fill out a form and then you get a tax ID. And with this tax ID, you can start collecting taxes. It's very important never to start collecting taxes before you have registered for in the tax jurisdiction in question because that would be illegal. And then finally, the fourth step, you'd have to file all the taxes you have collected. So the tax calculation in itself is the most complex part because the tax you have to calculate depends on where you are based, where your buyer is based, the type of product you sell, the amount you've sold, whether your customer is a business or a consumer, so whether it's a B2B or a B2C transaction. And there are yeah, as many cases as we have probably have companies in this audience, so it's recommended to always consult with a tax advisor before implementing any of these uh, configurations, I suggest, because um, you might get in trouble, right, if you configure things the right way. Uh, best case scenario, you get some paperwork. Worst case scenario, you get paperwork and a huge fine. So always confirm it. And what I will do is I'll cover the U.S. and Europe, because I think that will be uh, most representative for people here today. And it's a bit dry. Uh, tax calculation and we're approaching the end of the day so I hope you'll bear with me. So the first scenario I will cover is how to sell, how to calculate taxes if you have a business in Spain, in Europe, and you sell in Europe. So imagine I start a web shop in Spain and I start selling t-shirts. So from the get-go what I would start collecting and calculating on all transactions would be my local Spanish tax rate. So if I would sell a t-shirt to somebody based in Spain, I would calculate the Spanish tax rate. If the person would be based in Germany, I would also calculate the Spanish tax rate. But there is a threshold you should be aware of, of 10,000 euros for sales within the European Union. So if you sell for more than 10,000 euros outside of your home country, so in this case it would be outside of Spain, so say to Germany, the Netherlands, etc. Once I hit that, I would have to register for a system called OSS. And this is probably the only time today you'll see it where it doesn't mean open source, it means one-stop shop. And once you're registered for the one-stop shop, you would collect the tax rate of your buyer's country. So from that point onward, if I would sell a t-shirt to a German consumer, I would calculate the German tax rate. If my buyer would be in Greece, I would calculate the Greek tax. And of course for Spain it will, would remain the Spanish tax rate. And it's also important to differentiate between B2B and B2C transactions because indirect taxes are a consumer tax, so businesses are exempted. So when I say make a sale to a business that is in Europe but outside of the country where I'm registered, what I would have to do is validate that they are indeed a business against a system called VIS, and if it's the case, not calculate any taxes. So I might also have sales outside of Spain, internationally. If I would sell my t-shirts around the world, they would be exempt. So outside of Europe, around the world, they would be exempt from indirect taxes, but um, I might have to pay export or import taxes or, or what have you. If I would sell uh, services, B2B services are exempt as well, B2C services, you have to charge your local tax rate for those. And it's very important to know for sure whether your product is B2B or B2C. Because if I would sell, for example, right, CO packages, it's quite clearly a B2B product because no child is going to ask for a CO package for their birthday. But imagine I would sell, for example, uh, tennis consulting, where I would consult people on how to improve their tennis strokes and I would not collect any taxes 
and the tax office would ask any que would questions. And then I would say, well, it's, it's a B2B product. They would probably argue that given my tennis skills, it's highly unlikely that any professional players would purchase my product. So it would be a B2C product, uh, meaning that I would be on the hook for any taxes I would not have collected. And then finally, for digital products, there are thresholds. So digital products are things such as uh, downloads, SaaS products, membership sites, and there are thresholds around the world for that because countries, right? If you think of a country as a company, they want to maximize their revenue as well. So they start taxing sales on consumers in their country from companies that are not based there. This is why they're launching digital tax laws. And most countries around the world have thresholds you should be aware of, um, such as uh, Switzerland, South Korea, Australia. And once you hit the threshold, you should officially also register in that country and start co collecting those taxes. Now, if you're based in the US, it's usually a single rate for most states. Some states have no new sales tax, such as Delaware. Others have a single rate. Other states uh, <laughs> it's a bit, are a bit more of a nightmare because in the US there are more than 12,000 different tax jurisdictions. There are swimming pools that are in their own tax jurisdiction. So you could be in for a, for a treat depending on the state where you're in. And it could be a bit more complex. Usually single rate. Some cases, however, you should configure, you have to configure uh, many different rates. And then if you're selling to other states, there's this thing called Nexus. Um, there are two types of nexus, economic nexus, physical nexus. Economic nexus came about a few years ago because there was a U.S. Supreme Court ruling that made it possible for states to start taxing transactions on people who are based in the states from sellers who are not based there, again, to maximize revenue right, for the state. And most states have since then launched different nexus laws, uh, meaning that if you sell for a certain amount to different states, you have to register there and start cal collecting and calculating those taxes going forward. Typically, it's, it starts at about $100,000. Uh, for example, in New York, it's $500,000. So once you hit the threshold, you have to register there as well. Apart from economic nexus, you can also get physical nexus if you have employees or a warehouse in a different state. It might also mean you have to register there and start collecting those taxes. Now, if you're based in the US and you sell internationally, if you're selling to the EU, um, if you sell digital taxes, uh, you can register for the OSS for the one-stop shop system, meaning that uh, there's also a 10K th threshold. And from that point onwards, you need to register for the one-stop shop and start calculating the tax rate of your buyer's country. So if I would sell downloadable products uh, from the US, and once I would hit the 10K, I would, I would register for the one-stop shop, probably in Ireland. I always recommend doing it in Ireland because everything is in English and it's digital, but you can register in any European country that you like. And once you're registered, you start calculating the tax rate of your buyer's country. So if your buyer is in Greece, the Greek tax rate, if your buyer is in the Netherlands, the Dutch tax rate, and so on. For physical goods, there's the import one-stop shop um, with a value of 150 euros. Registration is optional, but highly recommended. If you're registered, you can already calculate and collect taxes on sales on goods that are valued less than 150 euros. If you do not do that, customers would have to pay this VAT at the time they collect their package. Um, so they would have to pay the courier or go to their local postal office and pay before they can get access to their package, which does not make for the best user experience and will probably lead to some uh, returns as well. For goods over 150, um, that's not an option. And if you sell to the rest of the world, it depends, right? Every country is different, so you would have to investigate on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, how can you configure all of this in WooCommerce? First of all, you have to enable the tax calculation. People sometimes say, well, I don't have this tax, these tax options in WooCommerce. You do, make sure you check the box. So you can start configuring taxes. And then you have a whole range of options. The first choice you have to make is if you want to input your taxes inclusive or exclusive of taxes. 
I always recommend doing it exclusive of taxes, because if you do it tax inclusive and the rates change, you have to update all your pricing, which is a bit of a, which is a bit of a hassle. Um, then you'd probably decide to calculate taxes based on your customer's address, because as we've seen in the cases discussed previously, that's usually um, what should be done. Shipping tax also usually standard in most locations. In some cases, it's exempt. So you might want to check this as well with your tax advisor. Then you have an option to create additional tax classes, which can be interesting if you sell products that do not products that do not have a standard tax rate, because usually uh, products that are considered bad for your health, such as alcoholic beverages or basic necessities such as bread, are taxed at a higher or lower rate, right? Depending on whether or not they're dangerous or a, or a basic necessity. So here you can create those tax classes so you can later associate products with them and charge lower taxes. Then you have to choose whether you want to display your prices inclusive or exclusive of taxes. I would recommend doing it inclusive of taxes, especially if you're in Europe. Um, in some places it's illegal to do it exclusive of taxes because it would mean that customers see a different price at the time of the checkout than what is advertised on your website. So in some cases it's illegal. If it's not illegal, right, the Europeans expect to see the pro to expect to pay the price they see advertised. If they come to the checkout and have to and see taxes are added, it would be a conversion killer. And then tax totals do that itemized because it gives the clearest overview. The next step is configuring the tax rates. Um, you have to do that manually, or you can also find a CSV online. There are many different um, uh, websites that publish CSVs with tax rates. As you might know, not everything you find on the internet is true. So be careful when you upload a CSV file you found somewhere, and also rates change. So you should be uh, stay on top of it. For example, Germany temporarily lowered their, their VAT rate after the corona pandemic to stimulate the economic recovery. So you have to stay on top, make sure to update your rates once they, uh, when they change. And then finally, you have the option here to associate the products with uh, the different tax classes, as I mentioned. Then it comes time to filing. For every transaction, what you should do is generate a tax receipt or an invoice, which is basically the same thing, because this is the basic underlying document you need. And the first thing a tax auditor will ask for when, they, when you're uh, submitted to a tax inspection. And invoices have to meet a certain set of criteria. They have to clearly indicate who you are as the seller, your, who your buyer is, uh, the date of the sale, an itemized overview of the product sold with a description of each, uh, the value, tax rate applied, and a sequential number, because that's one of all, they need to be in a sequential series, all your invoices, because that's one of the first things they will look at to, to detect fraud. And if you think you're um, in the right, wrong place and you're not really that interested in taxes, here's one takeaway you can use anyway from this uh, presentation. If you ever find yourself in an airplane and you just want to relax and the person next to you doesn't stop talking. When the inevitable question comes up, what do you do for a living? There's no better conversation killer than saying, I'm a tax inspector. All right. You also need to collect uh, location evidence because if I would sell my t-shirts from a Spanish web shop and 80% of my sales would be outside of Europe and I would not have collected any taxes, during an inspection they would ask questions, right? Because they want to maximize their revenue and they would say, hey, you've, you've not collected taxes on so many sales. I would have to, it's not a problem necessarily, but I would need to be able to justify that. And the way to justify that is by showing um, the, sh the billing address of the customer. So I would need to have the billing addresses. For digital products, um, you typically don't have a shipping address and you can collect three data points. If two out of those three coincide, you've established the buyer's location in a legally valid way. So the three data points that you can collect are the billing country of the customer, the BIC, which is the location of the bank that issued the credit card, and the IP address. 
Um, for, for B2B transactions, you also need to validate those. And in Europe, you can do that against a system called VIS, uh, which has been made available by the European Union. You can input the customer's tax ID there. It will then tell you whether or not it's valid. It will also give back a check code. That's very important. You store that because a company can be in business today and a tax ID can be valid today, but not tomorrow. So you should store that. And then um, if it's indeed a valid tax ID, no taxes are applied. When it comes to actually doing the filing, so remitting the taxes you have collected to the government, if you're in Europe, uh, you have the OSS, the one-stop shop, which makes it very easy because you can collect, you can, you can file your taxes in the country where you're um, registered for the entire EU. So if you're registered in Ireland and you collect the taxes on sales to Germany, Greece, and Spain, you just pay the Irish tax office and they take care of the redistribution for you. If you're in the US, it can be a bit more complex. Um, it depends a bit on the state. I mean, if, you, if you're registered in many different states, it's a bit more cumbersome because you have to fill out a lot of tax forms. You have to fill out a different one for each state. And some states also want a detailed breakdown uh, because they have many different layers of tax, such as Colorado, where you have the state tax, local tax, city tax, special taxes, etc. So filling out those forms can be a lot of work. Around the world, it's generally easy, right? It makes a lot of sense for governments to make it easy because you want people to be to comply, and the way to do that is not to make it cumbersome. Um, but your mileage may vary. In some countries, it's still very difficult to uh, register and file. Then what are the limitations of uh, WooCommerce? If you use WooCommerce to uh, calculate your taxes, you have to uh, make sure you keep your tax rates up to date, as I already mentioned. There is an add-on that WooCommerce has made available uh, you can use for that as well. Um, I haven't used it, so I don't know, but I assume it's quite good, concerning that everything they uh, put out is quite good. If you uh, sell from multiple locations, um, that's not possible to configure. So if you have stores in, in different locations, that's uh, not something you can use WooCommerce for. There are the thresholds that I mentioned you have to monitor, and that's also not available out of the box with WooCommerce. And then finally, the location evidence and the uh, tax IDs is also something that you would have to use other plugins for. Now, finally, a bit about conversion rates, because a lot of people are worried that when they start calculating their taxes on their uh, checkout page, their conversion rates will drop to the floor. The evidence I have is anecdotal, uh, but I've seen many, many businesses who were afraid of this happening, and it's almost never the case. Usually there's no decrease, or the decrease is almost right, statistically insignificant. If you sell physical products, uh, you have to start, you need the billing address, but you already have the shipping address of the customer. So it's not something that will uh, complicate the, uh, the checkout. Uh, digital products, you have the uh, location evidence you can collect. So it's, it's also not that, uh, that cumbersome. The only thing you should be aware of is the tax inclusive versus tax exclusive. Uh, because if you sell in Europe and you start adding taxes on the price of the checkout, it could be, a, or it would be a conversion killer for sure. In the US, people are quite used to it. So that brings an end to this uh, presentation. It may sound a bit overwhelming after all the uh, <laughs> information I, I mentioned. Uh, I suggest, you know, if, it's, if, if you feel overloaded, start with your business, where you're based, what you have to do to comply and forget about all the rest. And now we have plenty of time to answer all your questions. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ivo. That was um, really, really interesting. I learned a lot. I have one question. I'm coming. <laughs> I'll get back to that. But first, uh, the audience. Anyone have any questions about um, taxes? Okay. Uh, the mic, please. Hi, Ivo. Thank you. Uh, we are neighbors. I'm from Portugal. 
from, from Spain, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I have a question about uh, when selling in the EU physical goods uh, regarding the location of the tax. So you mentioned the billing address, but I've been heard from tax advisors the shipping address. So for instance, if I have a shop in Portugal and I have uh, someone buying from me from Spain, but they want me to deliver in France, where are the tax collected? Yeah, you, you take into account both the shipping and the billing address. So you calculate it based on where your business is based. And th for that, you typically take the shipping address, so where you ship from. And the customer is the billing address. So the your shipping address, so where you ship from, and where the, you bill the customer to where, you, um, to where they are billed. So the billing yeah, the billing address. All right, thank you. Another question, please. Mike? Thank you as well. Uh, about the location verification, if I'm selling digital products, uh, so the people give me an address, PayPay, uh, prepaid credit cards, and I have to trust them. Uh, do I have to uh, have technical measures to verify a location? Yeah, so officially you need two coinciding data points to uh establish the location in a legally valid way. Uh, PayPal already gives you the billing address, so you will have that. Uh, I would recommend also collecting the uh, IP address, um, and then if those two coincide, you have established the location in a legally valid way. If it's not the case and you have the doubt, you can always connect with a customer and ask them to, uh, to make sure you apply the right tax rate. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands, so I guess that's all from the audience. I have one question though, um, maybe two, but the first one. Now, as you mean, there are two things that are inevitable, you know, say rain and tax, mm -hmm. basically, right? So let's say someone is not really aware, you know, about the whole tax scenario and stuff, and then doesn't file it properly or doesn't collect the, the right taxes, you know, from the previous sales and all that. What are the implications for that uh, business and for that individual? Well, if you don't collect the right tax rate and you you don't uh, you have not collected them right historically, uh, you can get in trouble if you get a tax audit. So mm -hmm. the the government knows you're registered, right? You're registered as a business. You've made these sales. So they will ask for a list of all your transactions. And if they find out you have not collected your, your taxes, you could, uh, you could get a, a fine. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Just wanted to know you, about but, that. But it's good. You were asking for a friend, right? <laughs> so the next question, um, it says, is it really necessary to register for tax collection if you hit the threshold in a foreign country? So if I'm in a different country, but... I sell to maybe an external country and then I hit the threshold there. Is it still necessary? Yeah, so if you sell, for example, digital products and you sell them around the world, some countries have a zero rate threshold, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that if you sell one 10 euro ebook, you should already register officially and start filing your taxes there. Um, no tax advisor will tell you this, but I'm not a tax advisor, so I can say it. Um, I recommend being pragmatic about it. It's, um, it's like if you walk to the center of the city, uh, you walk home, three o'clock in the morning, there's no traffic whatsoever, nobody on the street, you come across a red pedestrian light, a red traffic light, what do you do, right? If you're like me, you look left, you look right, you look left, no, nobody's coming, so you cross. Um, but that does not mean it's legal, because the law does not say, right, you cannot cross a red traffic light unless at three o'clock in the morning you're walking by yourself, there's no traffic coming, etc. So if a police officer sees you, you can get a ticket. And I think it would even be right to get a ticket because if, you, if a police officer sees you, it means you did not look carefully before you crossed or you did see the police officer and decided to cross anyway, which would be a bit disrespectful. So um, the same for taxes. I would be pragmatic. I mean, if you have to pay 1,000 a year and need a local fiscal representative to file uh, 100 euros in taxes, it does not make a lot of sense, but it also does not mean you cannot get in trouble. But if you do get in trouble, I think as an entrepreneur, you have a really big PR opportunity there as well to, uh, <laughs> to exploit. Okay. Uh, thank you very much.
Okay, we have another question. But just, just a minute, okay? Uh, thank you for all the information. I just wanted to double check. Uh, this 10K threshold in EU also applies for services. For example, I have a service provided from Greece in whole Europe and uh, I reach the 10K from clients from Luxembourg, like, let's say, or uh, anywhere. Do I need to register? Yes, but typically services are, are B2B, so I assume you're, it's you're... B2C. B2C, yeah, yeah, so normally you need to... Uh, Thank you. And, and just to make sure, because I, I think she has, if, I, if you reach the 10K, for example, in Luxembourg, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it used to be per country, but now the 10K are for all over Europe, right? Yeah. So you, you, you do not need to reach 10K in, in Luxembourg. You, you need to reach 10K in Europe, period. So it's really fast. Yeah, outside outside of your home country. Yeah, yes, outside of your own country. Yeah, yeah the so better if way you to sell, say it. If you sell in Greece and you sell for... If you sell 2,000 yeah. to Spain, 2,000, 5,000 to Luxembourg, yeah, you got to yeah, register. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Any other question? Okay, I guess that is it. And um, we've come to the end of this talk. And I want to say a big thank you to Ivo for coming and giving us this um, enlightenment and helping us understand better about taxes. Like I said, two important things, rain and tax. Don't, you, cannot, you, you cannot avoid them. So a round of applause for our speaker, please. Thank you. <laughs>